poll. This is really weird for me because See You at the Poll is a student-led, student-initiated event. So really, I'm not a student. You can see that. I'm a little old to be a kid, right? Can you tell? Oh, you're being nice. You guys are like, no, you look like a kid. No, that's not true. I'm not a student. And I want to just welcome everybody and tell you a couple stories real quick. And then I want to see what God does in this crowd. Because I believe that this is the year that you guys own this thing again. So me and Miss Cassandra and I and some others have been talking. And we really believe in you guys in this generation. The verse for this year is from Psalm 24 for See What the Poll. And that verse, in that verse, the one passage they're looking at for See What the Poll has to do with the generation that seeks God. It says, this is the generation that seeks God, the God of Jacob. And the belief is, is that this generation, your generation, not my generation, your generation, the millennial generation, you're going to be a whole generation in America that goes after Jesus Christ with all your hearts again. And really, to be honest, I don't know if you've noticed or your parents have talked about it. Some of you little kids may not know this, but some of you older guys do. Our America is a very challenged situation. And all over, people are talking about the challenges. Well, guess what? It won't be my generation that fixes it. We've got a mess that we're all in, and my generation's helped us get there. Your generation's going to grow up, and you're going to be the ones that lead us. Somebody in your generation is going to be a president of the United States. That's going to happen. Someday, your generation is going to lead this nation on the hill. And on Capitol Hill, I get the great gift and grace of walking with senators and congressmen and women and praying over them and ministering to them. And that's an honor. That's an honor. It's something that I couldn't have asked for. And in our America, I get to do that. And I've walked with these people. Some of them, are very, they're very old. Some of them are from the generation before me, not the generation I'm in. And I prayed with them and I walked with them. And guess what? They're going to pass on and you're going to lead us. Now, how many does that scare a little bit? You guys are older. Y'all ready to be president? I mean, the vote's coming up. Are y'all ready to do it? Raise your hand if you're ready to be president. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll vote for you. All right, so here's the deal. Let me tell you a couple things about See at the Poll, where I come from. In 1991, See at the Poll started. It's like 25 years ago. I was about 16 years old. And at my school, West Ohio High School in North Carolina, which is out in the middle of nowhere, I grew up on a farm. And one of the local youth leaders asked me to speak at See at the Poll. I did not know it would be the first time I ever preached in public. I stood at the pole, and as people unloaded from the bus, I preached the gospel of Jesus to them, and they came up and surrounded and prayed. Now let me tell you what it took to get there. So at that time, see what the pole was not, quote, quote, allowed or encouraged. And so at my school, they told us, we, we asked the school, can we have a see what the pole rally? They're doing this everywhere. Students across the nation are praying at the poll for their schools and for our nation. Can we do this? And our school said, our principal said, no, we can't do it. And so I said, okay. I knew that by the law, that at that time, President Clinton had made a law that gave us equal access to everything. And I knew that if we did it, we could do it as students. It could be student-led, student-initiated, and they couldn't stop us. They said that if we went ahead and did it, that they'd put us in detention. And so I said, oh, well, here we go. So all of my friends decided not to do it. They knew that they, if we left the class or left school, we'd be put in detention. And they decided they didn't want to be in detention. That morning, I got up, and I remember being in class. We had an early class that day at 7, so we wanted for a Spanish class. And I saw Miss Tabor that morning. I said, Miss Tabor, I'm going to go to see you at the poll. She said, don't bother coming back to my class. I said, yes, ma'am. So I walked out of the class, I went down to the pole, and I stood there. The local youth leader came. It was me and him, and then a couple others started getting off the buses as the buses came in. That class went on because it's an early class. I was getting ready to go to detention, I knew it. I'd never been in detention. I was almost a straight-A student. I was set up to go to UNC another couple years later. I had everything in order. Life was going well, great athlete, all that good stuff. But I was willing to lose it all to get the chance to stand for Jesus. And so we stood out there, we preached the gospel. Kids accepted Jesus Christ right at our school in our front yard. It was awesome. Right there in that spot. Everyone started to crowd around that pole. Then the teachers started coming out. People started watching what was going on. When we got done, when we got done, God moved at that school. And guess what? I did not go to detention. The principal did not bother with me. And from then on, we had see you at the pole. And that's where see you at the pole started. Here's the kicker. That right there, guys, is the baseline. That's the baseline. That's freedom to have see you at the poll. Freedom to pray at school is the baseline.
baseline. That's the foundation. It's been done in the public school. You're in a private school. You're kind of in a forced situation where you come to see you at the poll and the teachers have brought you and nobody's stopping you. The reason why I make this is I want to say, or I make this point is I want to say this. Why stop here when you can take this to the next level? When you can own it, you can be the ones that literally pray in your generation, both in this school and the public schools around our nation to come and see God. Why is that important? I'll tell you why it's important. Because every day, everywhere I go, less and less people love Jesus. And I'm telling you, if you're a person who loves Jesus, this is your chance to make a stand. It's your chance to really press it to the next level and do something for it. Every day since that point at 16 years old, I've been on an adventure with God. I've been around the world, and I've gotten to see amazing things, and I've had amazing adventures. Some of those I'll talk about another time, or even a camp meeting. And that right there started it. This is your turn. It's your turn to start an adventure with God. It's your turn to lead it. So what I really want to do at this time is give this back to you. I want to give it back to the students. So I'm going to open it up. And if you want to pray, I want you to take a second to just pray out loud. We're going to all bow our heads and close our eyes in just a minute. And then you're welcome to just pray out loud with that on your heart for your generation. If there's something that you're struggling with or you're struggling with about your friends or that maybe you're praying for in your own personal time, you can pray that out right here, right now. You have the freedom to do that. You're going to own this thing right here. And then when it's done, we'll close up the prayer, and then we're going to let your generation lead us in worship. And I'm going to join in as you lead us to the next level in worship here in just a second. I'm proud of y'all. And I believe that this is a good starting point for y'all to do amazing things in our world. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Does that sound good? So let's all bow our heads, close our eyes for a second, 